Mayor Joyce Craig is settling into her third term, and there is a lot on the Queen City's agenda. The mayor joins us in studio this morning. Thanks for being here, Mayor. Oh, it's so great to be here, Adam. Thank you. So, uh, you know, the homeless issue is one you've been working on a lot, and for the last year, you've had a new homeless initiatives coordinator. You know, tell us about some of the progress points that, that have been achieved and where you want to go from there. Yeah, sure. She, Shauna Green is our homeless uh, initiatives director. She's done a fantastic job in terms of uh, bringing our nonprofits together, our faith-based faith -based community together, um, and the community and businesses so that we understand uh, the impacts that this is having on our city. Uh, we've increased affordable housing options in the city of Manchester. Uh, we This winter we had a, um, a warming shelter that was available to individuals and we've allocated $8 million in federal funds to go toward affordable housing options in the city. So we're continuing to move forward and really address the needs of our most vulnerable in the city of Manchester in addition to you know the, the outreach that we've been doing with nonprofits. So we are making significant progress and are thrilled to have Shauna on board. In terms of the camps, do you think we'll ever reach a point at which you don't have those pockets of the city where there are large outdoor, essentially, congregation or living areas for people? I certainly hope so, because I've visited those encampments and they're not a healthy place for individuals to live. And so we do do constant outreach and provide services to individuals and have had success in terms of getting people into long-term recovery and into shelter. And that's really what we want to do. We want to stabilize individuals and provide provide them with the help that they need so that they can they can be better. They have to be ready to do that, though. We can't make people do things that they don't want to do. Uh, but that's why it's so important to have the community involved and to have that outreach continue so that we can provide the services that they, they do need. You mentioned the want to, and that's a co component of it, but the affordable housing is too. As you said, where are we going to see some, some development in Manchester? I know the former police department is something that's on tap. Yeah, that's very exciting. So there's a developer who's proposing to um, demolish the former police station and build affordable housing there. The city is also working um, to develop two underutilized parking lots for mixed income housing. And then we're working with uh, Manchester Housing to expand the Kelly Falls development and other nonprofits here in the city. On the public safety front up in Concord, uh, it's that time of the year when the bail reform issue comes up again and usually it ends up whatever solution is being discussed kind of gets chopped up and watered down and sometimes killed outright. This being, of course, the 2018 law that passed uh, bail reform that made it much easier for people to get out of jail after arrest. You just had a case on April 6th, an individual arrested for allegedly firing gunshots into a car on Mast Road. That's a Class B felony, a gun crime, something that you focused on a lot. Automatically released, no jail. First, what's your reaction to that? And what do you tell people in that neighborhood? It's extremely disappointing to have something like that happen in the city of Manchester, anywhere, quite frankly. Uh, anybody who um, commits a violent crime like that should not be released on PR bail. Um, you know, I don't believe that someone who can't afford to get out of jail should be held there. But these violent offenders um, should be held in jail. We need to protect our residents and visitors in the city of Manchester. Our police department is working extremely hard um, to do what they need to do to provide the protection protection and the safety that our residents expect of them and I appreciate all of their work but when things like this happen it is so disappointing and it causes me you know concern uh, quite frankly and and we need to stop it you know, when Manchester police go up to Concord and testify on this, some supporters of bail reform essentially get up there and say, well, these are just stories, these are anecdotes, undermining the, you know, these events that are happening, saying we just don't have the statistics to back this up. How are you going to convince your fellow Democrats outside of Manchester that this is a real problem? So we've had a number of conversations, and in fact, the revisions to the bail reform were um, put forward by representatives of Manchester. And so they've seen the data that the Manchester Police Department has put forward. Um, we hear about it day in and day out that violent offenders are being released on PR, PR bail here in the city of Manchester. And I appreciate the work that they're doing and I support the work that they're doing. And I think, again, it's important to note how, um, how much the police department is doing in our city to protect our residents and our visitors. And in fact, um, I believe uh, it was last year that they uh, took 81 illegal guns off the street and continue uh, with those efforts. Schools are obviously still trying to bounce back from the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, you have a new program you're working on called the Manchester Promise that it attempts to give some kids a leg up trying to get into college. Explain what it's going to do. Yeah, we're really thrilled with that. We're using ARPA dollars uh, to put toward the Manchester Promise. It's a partnership with Southern New Hampshire University, Manchester Community College, and Duet. Um, and we're focusing on students who have been Manchester Public School graduates, um, students who have been negatively affected by COVID and who wouldn't otherwise be able to go to college. Um, so they'll be 
be able to do so and it will be debt free. So we'll be paying for their college education. Um, and then, you know, the hope is that they stay in our community and work here and participate. You know, you've got that situation with needing a superintendent in Manchester. How important is it to get it right on this next hire? Oh, it's absolutely important to get it right this time. And one of the critical parts in this is that our community is involved. So I know that the special committee that's focused on the superintendent search is actively working on community involvement. So I really want to encourage members of our community, residents, uh, businesses, anybody, because everybody is really affected by the, the success of our public schools to participate in this process so that we do hire someone who, you know, will lead us in the right direction. Do you think it's time to look, you know, internally? It seems like some, some of the problem lately has been people coming into Manchester and maybe not being ready for maybe the politics of the city. It can be rough. I mean, by New Hampshire standards, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't think it's that bad, but some people are kind of surprised by how tough it can be here. Is it time maybe to look to, for someone who's committed to Manchester long term? Well, absolutely. We need someone who is committed to Manchester long term, no doubt. And certainly there are people internally who meet that criteria, and there may be people externally. We need to provide an opportunity where anybody anybody can uh, apply and then you know present these individuals to the public so that they can ask questions and they can be properly vetted. On the economic development front, we're a few years into the Army experiment that is the Advanced Regenerative Manufacturing Institute that Dean Kamen runs in the military. Yard. What's the next step there, and when are we going to start to see some more build out in terms of that economic development? Yeah, so the city just was working with Army, with UNH, uh, with Southern New Hampshire University, and with the airport, and we um, applied for an EDA grant, the Build Back Better grant. We were one of 60 communities that made the finals, and we uh, uh, submitted our application back on March 15th. Um, that could potentially bring in about $100 million in federal funds to the city of Manchester for um, 20,000 20, jobs, work workforce development um, and a teaching airport as well as the connection between the west side and uh, the um, the mill yard. So there's a huge opportunity to really build out the bio uh, manufacturing and uh, that that's at the um, that exists right now with Army and we're really excited by that. And there might be a physical connection you're mentioning between the west and east side. Uh, yes, with the pedestrian bridge, bridge, which is something that we are always asked about. Yeah. So we're really excited about that. About that. Well, that'll be cool to see what unfolds. Yes. Manchester Mayor Joyce Craig, thank you for joining us on Close Up. Thank you.